So the most important thing about a lawnmower is that it cuts grass well, it does it quickly, and it's comfortable to operate. But I think largely the differences in cut quality between these mowers is more hype than it is reality from my experience. Especially considering that all these machines are basically using the same hydros and the same engines, and it's regulated that they all have to turn at the same blade tip speed. So that mainly leaves the deck geometry as the only differentiator on cut quality. So I'm focusing more on other things that make one mower stand out against another. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to talk about the top features that I look for in a mower. And I want to compare these two mowers that look exactly the same and explain why they're not. And that's going to be part of me explaining what I look for in a brand. Now I've done a big comparison series looking at all the different types of tractors out there. And within tractors I find dramatic differences in what these machines are capable of that you just don't see with mowers. There are a lot of similarities. So it comes down to a smaller list of things that differentiate between brands. Now what we have right here is a Hustler 36 inch stand on mower and a Cub Cadet 36 inch stand on mower. And I've already done two different videos. One was a couple years ago, one was a couple weeks ago. I've done two videos talking about why I actually do like stand-on mowers. So I'm not going to even talk about that. But it's really irrelevant to the conversation that these are stand-on mowers because all of the concepts I'm going to introduce are the same for sit-down zero turns. All of the mowers I've shown on my channel from all the different brands were just brought to me as a demo machine that I was able to test out and do reviews on. So I really appreciate all the brands who've participated in that. Now this Hustler and this Cub Cadet were provided by the Tractor Yard, and both of these are demo machines that you can buy at a reduced price. The last Cub Cadet I had, a guy who lives about 30 minutes from me saved $2,500 by buying that mower that had three hours on it. So I'll put some pricing and contact information in the video description. If anybody wants either of these mowers, you could get a heck of a deal from the tractor yard. So before I get into the specific comparison between these two mowers and why two machines that look the same are not the same, I want to talk about the top features I've seen on any mower in the last year. Now some of these I've done full reviews on and some I've only done shorter demos. Number one feature that highlights a brand is Ferris with their suspension. Every mower has some type of suspension if it's a higher end mower. The Ferris having the entire deck and platform on a heavy duty spring suspension is a top notch feature that makes that brand stand out. The next feature that makes a specific line of mowers stand out is the kickstand built into the Kubota mowers. The ability to remove a tool off of the mower and crank that up and get access to your deck is a fantastic design. Absolutely great design. Number three, I'm going to hit on briefly because I don't want to go through the same argument I've had with 10,000 comments already, and that is the Cub Cadet steering wheel. You don't have to like that Cub Cadet mower. You can say whatever you want about it, but here's a statement of fact. If you're in mud or you're on the side of a hill, having front steering on the casters that is automatically in time with your rear steering is a huge advantage. Four-wheel steering is better than two-wheel steering. And whether you like everything else about that mower, that is a real winning advantage from Cub Cadet. Another thing I want to point out is I don't have any kind of relationship with Cub Cadet. I could care less. Same with every mower that I'm talking about today. I'm not affiliated with any of them. The next feature that I absolutely love is Grasshopper with their hydraulic lift front decks. Same as the Kubota, the ability to access the underside of your deck with no tools, without crawling down on the ground, is fantastic. Now that is a premium feature, but I think it's one that's worth paying for if you're getting a premium mower. Couple honorable mention features on mowers that I've tested was the toolless oil change on the Bobcat mowers or you don't have to get down on your knees, you don't have to have any tools, it's a super easy oil change. Little things like that matter. I don't think it's quite on the level of those other features, but 
it shows that a company is thinking about the details when they design their mowers. Now on the other side of it, when I reviewed that mower, I kind of made a big deal about it having a travel gear that allowed you to go almost 20 miles an hour. You would never mow in that gear. I, as a matter of fact, you can't mow in that gear. It's a transport gear. And I thought, is it really worth it to complicate the design of your transmission just to have that ability to get to, to your trailer faster? And honestly, you know, after giving it more thought, I don't think that's something I would want. So those are small innovations that set one mower apart from another. But beyond that, I think a lot of it is overhyped the differences between the mowers. So this Cub Cadet 36 inch cut stand on mower has a Kawasaki FS 600. That one has a Kawasaki FX 600. All of these companies are getting the motors, the engines from the same place. When you compare all these brands, you're gonna find that they mostly are delivering the same power with the same components so what makes one stand out from the other? Well, it's always going to be the little things. So whenever I go to grab this handle and move this deck, I've got one finger on it. So on the Hustler, this is a lot heavier. It's like doing a curl to lift it. Comes up pretty easy to about here, and then it really is kind of hard to pull. Would I choose my mower because one handle was harder to pull than the other? Not really. But it matters because that doesn't happen on accident. Someone was intentional about saying, let's make this deck easy to raise and lower. And that is what I'm looking for in design aspects on these mowers. So here we have on the Hustler, your standard flap. This is a hard plastic. When you lift it up, it pops back down. So this is what most mowers have. And I don't like it. I have a tendency to tear it up rip it off, doesn't work very well, don't have an option to use it or not. Here we have the flap on the Cub Cadet. When I put it up, it stays up. When I put it down, it stays down. I like that a lot better because sometimes I use it in the up position. Now this is not hard plastic. It's a, it's a thick, heavy rubber which can bend and flex instead of cracking and breaking. Here's another interesting design choice. On any mower, your spindles are going to be offset a little bit. If they were straight in line, your cut wouldn't overlap. So you have to have a little bit of offset between the different spindles. This is two spindles. They have the one on the right forward, the one on the left back. What that means is if you're getting up close to a house or anything else, you're going to want to blow grass away from it. So you're going to put this end, this side of the mower up against the house. Well, they have the spindle on, on this side that'll be up against the house further back. So what that means is we have a gap here of about 12 to 16 inches between the cutting area and this spindle, which means if I make a, a corner up here, I'm gonna leave 12 to 16 inches where I make that corner. On the Cub Cadet, they've made the opposite decision and they've put the spindle on this side out to the front and the way it's set up here, I've only got about four to six inches. And that basically comes down to every time I mow against something and I'm discharging away from that object, I'm gonna have a lot less weed eating to do with this mower than that one. It's the little things. So where I stand on this is that from reading comments and talking to you guys, people would list Hustler as a premium brand, but they wouldn't list Cub Cadet. I've got two mowers here from those two brands that look almost ex exactly the same, and the Cub Cadet is better designed, and it costs less money. Personally, I would go with the Cub Cadet over the Hustler, and that's trying to be unbiased, and it's not carrying into it my preconceived notions about these two brands. So hopefully that gives you a couple things to think about the next time you're considering buying a new lawnmower. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.